Good evening. I'm Jan Kowalski with Green Slate One, and today I'm going to be discussing um, the subject of the United States Department of Justice report investigating the Chicago Police Department. And I'm brought to you by Green Slate One Incorporated, and there's the website on your screen along with their email address and phone number. There we go. And I'm Jan Kowalski, and I'm an attorney licensed to practice law in Illinois, and I'm not giving legal advice today. I'm just giving you some general information as to legal issues impacting on civil rights today, and most specifically, the Chicago Police Department and the United States Department of Justice report that was just released on January 13th. And again, this is a live call-in show, so please call in with your comments, questions, and concerns. The number to call to reach me is displayed on your screen, which is 312-738-1060, and this is live show, and you can call in now. And I am Jan Kowalski, that's K-O-W-A-L-S-K-I. Back to me. And so to give you some assistance in remembering my name, um, there's my little picture of the koala on the, the skis because my name is Jan Koala Ski. And so you don't mistake it, it's not Kawasaki, <laughs> it's Kowalski. And here's my cute picture of the cute little koala that's 100% qualified to address you. And back to me. Uh, and tonight, once again, we're brought to you by Green Slate One Incorporated. And Green Slate uh, provides lots of services to help uh, ex convicts, including re entry programs, feeding the families of Inglewood, and also community service for the Circuit Court of Cook County Community Service Programs. So please uh, call Green Slate One. And um, I just lost their sheet. <laughs> so bear with me. Um, but you can call, this is a live call and show, and I'm discussing the United States Department of Justice report, which was just released on January 13th, 2017. And, shockingly, the United States Department of Justice is not known for their brevity. The report is, let me show you this report here. There's my Zoom 2. All right, Zoom 2 didn't work, Zip. Go to Zoom, th oh, they're all right, there's <laughs> Zoom 3, sorry. Zoom 2, I'm going back to Zoom 2. I don't know if you can see this too well online on screen, but the United States Department of Justice, Civil Rights Division, and the United States Attorney's Office for the Northern District of Illinois released this report on January 13, 2017. The report is 161 pages along with a three-page index. Back to me. Now, um, not surprisingly, the United States Department of Justice report found that the Chicago Police Department engages in a pattern or practice of unconstitutional use of force. Some people are not surprised by this. Well, what I found particularly surprising is today, the cover of the, United, uh, of the Chicago Sun-Times. Here it is. Whoa, it doesn't say anything about the United States Department of Justice report reporting that the Chicago Police Department engages in a pattern or practice of unconstitutional use of force. Instead, we have a picture there, a very nice picture of President Obama at the White House with looks like a Cubs jersey. If you eventually turn to page 8, you will get some of the details about the United States Department of Justice essentially condemning the Chicago Police Department for the abuses. Now, a lot of people listening might not be surprised that they've suffered abuses at the hands of the Chicago Police Department. Well, this 160-page report uh, details these abuses, and I'm just going to briefly, because I only have 25 minutes here, and this is a live call-in show. So if you want to call in with comments, questions, or concerns, please call the number on the screen, which is 312-738-1060. I wanted to lead off with a quote by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., which for me is inspirational. In the process of gaining our rightful place, we must not be guilty of wrongful deeds. And this is essentially what we're talking about, wrongful deeds committed by the Chicago Police Department. And it's not 
all the officers in the Chicago Police Department. Matter of fact, most of this 160-page report details the stresses that officers are, are subjected to on a daily basis, including low morale, um, uh, difficulties with their training, uh, officer uh, promotion difficulties. But my, my focus tonight is for my listeners and that was as to what we can do about this. The United States Department of Justice has identified certain problems within the Chicago Police Department. And Mayor Emanuel has suggested that these can be alleviated by, uh, it was in October of 2016, uh, the Chicago City Council enacted an ordinance providing for the uh, creation of a new organization. Uh, it used to be the, hold on, now I'm losing my notes here, bear with me. The new organization is the COP, I, see that's the thing is, the COPA, which is to replace the the, where's my notes here? The, oh, the COPA is to be replacing this IPRA. And um, the IPRA, apparently the city council felt that um, uh, a lot of these problems with the IPRA can be remedied by renaming the uh, investigatory uh, agency from this catchy IPRA. It's now going to be called the COPA. And Mayor Emanuel has, it looks like, um, indicated a $7.2 million budget for six months of uh, this COPA in existence that's going to be starting this year in 2017. But I found on the internet, you can, it's amazing what you can find on the internet, um, the Illinois, what is this, this Independent Police Review Board, the IPRA, um, right now, according to the City of Chicago Department of Personnel, their finance department, has got a, a $7.3 million budget and is staffed by 82 employees. So because of the uh, abuses of these constitutional rights, we are now giving this organization a different name. So instead of calling it the IPRA, we're now renaming it to the COPA and we're giving it more money because apparently it violated people's constitutional rights. So the city council has decided to give the agency a different name and more money. And um, shockingly, the leadership remains the same. Uh, the same beleaguered uh, chief administrator under the IPRA continues to be this interim director of the COPA and uh, having uh, 141 anticipated employees. So in response to the Black Lives Matter, in response to excessive police brutality, what do we have? The city shoveling money at a new organization that they're creating, which they're calling the COPA. But shockingly, they're not really making any reforms. Matter of fact, the Justice Department indicated in their report on page 92 that if none of these changes fixes the defective investigation practices, then the COPA's expanded investigative authority simply exacerbates these investigative problems. So long story short, even the United States Department of Justice doesn't seem to believe that this COPA is going to be any more effective than the IPRA. Now, officers are allowed to use force. And there are constitutional rights that are invoked here, including the Fourth Amendment. The United States Supreme Court in Graham versus Con uh, Connor, which is a 1989 decision, essentially defined what is permissible force for Fourth Amendment purposes. And the inquiry looks at whether the officer's actions were objectively reasonable in light of the totality of the circumstances. And courts will look to the severity of the crime, whether the subject poses an immediate threat to the safety of the officers or others, and whether he is actively resisting arrest or attempting to evade arrest by flight. That's what the courts are, are looking for here. And the officer essentially has to be fearful for his own safety and the fear needs to be immediate before they take action. Now, in large part, this 160 page United States Department of Justice report had any number of concerns uh, relating to the Chicago Police Department practices, um, including that they engage in a pattern or practice of unconstitutional use of force. And once again, this is a live call-in show, and I'm Jan Kowalski here on behalf of Green Slate One Incorporated, and I can take your questions now at 312-738-1060.
Now, this report found that the police department relies heavily on specialized units, which they call tactical or T-A-C-T units. And uh, the statistics show that the police department uses force 10 times more likely against blacks than against whites. And this is in the United States Department of Justice report here, and I can give you a page number if you'd like me to. Um, among the other um, indications reported by the United States Department of Justice was a story on page 30 of the report that indicates that a man was walking down the street and he was fidgeting. So the officers decided to um, deliver 45 rounds into him, including 28 rifle rounds, but apparently dozens of these shots that were fired uh, did not make it into the subject and um, were left unaccounted for in the residential neighborhood. And apparently this report was unfounded by the Chicago Police Department, the IPRA. And this is, is detailed on pages 25 to 28 of the Illinois Department of Justice report. And again, if you have any questions as to police brutality or the United States Department of Justice report, I'm here, I'm Jan Kowalski, I'm here on behalf of Green Slate One Inc. And you can call in live at 312-738-1060. Among the other criticisms leveled by the United States Department was poor weapons discipline. For instance, they gave an example of a partner that shot and discharged his weapon because his partner did. Um, there's a, a long uh, passage in there about shooting at moving vehicles. Apparently, it's against Chicago Police Department policy to shoot at moving vehicles because, number one, shooting at a moving vehicle is not likely to stop the moving vehicle. The bullets might strike a passenger or victim and they might provoke a, a fight or flight response by the driver. And last but not least, if the police actually do manage to seriously injure uh, the offending driver, uh, that's going to leave a runaway vehicle unattended that could careen into uh, innocent passerbys and neighborhoods. So the Chicago Police Department official follow-up policy is not to shoot at moving vehicles. And again, that's detailed on page 27 of the United States Department of Justice report. So in addition to poor weapons, discipline, failing to await backup, unsound tactics for moving vehicles, uh, there was a, a lot of criticism as to this Guns for Freedom uh, program uh, employed by the Chicago Police Department. Apparently they would detain someone and uh, would indicate that they would be allowed um, out of the, the momentary uh, Terry stop if they were to relinquish a, a firearm of some kind. Um, sometimes uh, the report uh, indicates that young people would be taken to rival gang neighborhoods and left there. Or the person would be displayed within the squad, squad car in the, the uh, rival gang neighborhood, placing that person's life in jeopardy. These are just some of the excessive police force that's been reported in this United States Department of Justice report. And again, I'm Jan Kowalski. I'm here on behalf of Green Slate One. And you can call in with your live questions or concerns at 312-738-1060. Um, the report goes on to indicate that there are certain instances of young black men that are just used to lifting their shirt whenever they see a squad car without being asked. Apparently, this is routine practice in some South and West neighborhoods for police officers to just want to make sure that no one has a weapon in their waistband. So they're requesting individuals just walking down the street to lift their shirts. So it's become so commonplace that these men are lifting their shirts. And this is detailed on page 144 of the United States Department of Justice report. Then of course there are the jump out squads. I had never heard of this, but it was news to me, but perhaps some of my listeners are more familiar with this. Apparently this jump out squad is when a plain closed, unmarked, a plain closed officer in an unmarked vehicle will drive rapidly towards a group of individuals and jump out and rapidly advance on the group with their weapons drawn. At which point, if someone runs, an officer will get out and give chase. But if not, then they just close the door and drive on. This is called a jump out squad and referred to uh, at least in two different uh, sections of the United States Department of Justice report. The report goes into police accountability. In other words, the way to stop the police using unreasonable force is for the higher ups within the department to hold the people that are doing this accountable for their actions. And part of this is this IPRA, which is the Independent Police Review Authority, which was created in 2007 and replaced OPS, just like they're doing nowadays. They're replacing IPRA with a new name and they're calling it COPA and giving it more funding. 
Now the CDOPA sounds way better than Independent Police Review Authority. Now they're calling it Civilian Office of Police Accountability. And they're giving it broader range of uh, authority and they're giving it additional staffing. The problem is, is that um, according to the United States Department of Justice, this is not me, this is the United States Department of Justice report, that the COPA more funding and the range will be broader, but there's, quote, not sufficient analysis to determine whether the COPA will have capacity to do anything better than the Independent Police Review Authority, the IPRA. And once again, I'm Shane Kowalski. I'm here on behalf of Green Slate One Incorporated. And you can reach me for your live questions, concerns, and comments about this United States Department of Justice report at the number displayed on your screen, which is 312-738-1060. Now, of those cases that were investigated by the Independent Police Review Authority, uh, ap uh, apparently they don't investigate all the allegations of police uh, brutality. They don't investigate all the complaints. For instance, the city um, requires a sworn affidavit, and without a sworn affidavit, then they will just close the complaint. The statistics the United States Department of Justice reports is that 2,400 complaints per year are dismissed or closed because they, they're not uh, accompanied by a sworn affidavit, which is a statement under oath under penalties of perjury that is true and correct to the best of your ability. Now, without this sworn affidavit, they closed the cases. Uh, also, and for me, it was groundbreaking reading this report, uh, the United States Department of Justice found that there is a code of silence within the Chicago Police Department, and that's enforced by higher-up of officials within the Chicago Police Department, and that a lot of people fear retaliation, and that's why they might seek to file an anonymous police complaint as to this police brutality. Now, anonymous complaints, similarly with the unsworn affidavits, uh, unsworn complaints are not even investigated by the uh, Independent Police Review Authority. Um, and then for those complaints that are investigated, they won't investigate a complaint of police brutality that's five years old. And then there's some serious flaws that the Department of Justice found in the Illinois Police Review Authority's fact-finding investigative. Uh, for instance, they have biased investigate, investigative techniques. For instance, the officers are coached in the middle of giving a recorded interview with their union reps and or attorneys being present. In addition, these union reps and or attorneys assist officers to complete the police reports. Uh, the accused officer gets 24 hours notice before their interview. Uh, the witness officers, they're entitled to two hours notice before their interview. And a lot of times they don't interview witnesses. Uh, the United States Department of Justice reports that uh, there was uh, an officer reported having discharged only two rounds into the uh, suspect, but apparently the autopsy displayed uh, a third shot. Apparently he'd been shot in the back, and uh, the Illinois Independent Police Review Authority decided uh, not to interview any witnesses as to this third shot. And that's detailed on page 59 in the United States Department of Justice report. And again, I'm Jan Kowalski, and I'm here live to take your questions, concerns, and comments as to this police brutality that's been reported in the United States Department of Justice report as to the Chicago Police Department that was just released on January 13, 2017. The Department of Justice called this, quote, a coordinated coach and conceal effort that the Chicago Police Department officials condone officer collusion by encouraging officers to have conversations, rehearsing accounts, coach witness, uh, they have leading questions, they ignore evidence like gunshot residue tests, they ignore physical evidence. Um, for instance, in the McDonald's shooting case that we're most likely all familiar with, apparently video on two out of the five uh, car cameras uh, was recovered. And um, from a January of 16 report from the Chicago Police Department itself, they found that 80% of the dash cameras were not working or had been tampered with. Uh, this internal report from January of 16 um, noted that the officers routinely removed microphone batteries, destroyed antenna, and stashed the microphones in the glove compartments of their squad car. And this is related on page 78 of the United States Department of Justice report. Um, if an officer is actually charged with some sort of violation, um, they will encourage, they being the in, in, 
Independent Police Review Authority encourages mediation. Now, mediation is a nice way of saying a plea bargain in exchange for modest discipline. And the discipline that the Independent Police Review Authority delivered in the 2% of those cases that were actually found to have uh, misconduct, generally speaking, and I have the statistics here, but the discipline in most of the cases, um, here's, my, here's my statistic, here we go, is that um, the punishment was usually a one-day suspension or a notation of, quote, violation noted would be in that officer's personnel file, and it would stay in the file for one year. And then in 28% of these cases, that was the no discipline or this notation of uh, violation noted in their file. Another 24.8% case percent of the, the punishment that was made it out for these violations was a verbal reprimand. Finally, 45.6% of the officers for which conduct was sustained received a suspension. And now the average suspension is reported by the United States Department of Justice to be 7.8 days, but the most likely um, sup uh, suspension was a three-day suspension. And in less than 1% of the cases where they found the allegations of misconduct were sustained, in less than 1% of these cases was there a discharge of the officer. And again, I'm Jan Kowalski. I'm here on behalf of Green Slate One, and we're addressing tonight the United States Department of Justice report as to the Chicago Police Department uh, on its unreasonable use of excessive force that just came out on January 13, 2017. And I'm available for your comments, questions, and concerns at 312 738 1060. Um, last but not least, I only have a couple more minutes. Um, it's the United States Department of Justice found that it's readily apparent that there is a critical failure of leadership at the first line of supervision within the Chicago Police Department. And these are the sergeants and the lieutenants who are supposed to be out there supervising the young officers and mentoring them and training them. And the United States Department of Justice found that it was readily apparent that there's a critical failure. Um, my concern is that the City of Chicago, the 2017 budget, um, throws $7.2 million at this newly created um, agency called the COPA, which is going to have 141 employees. But uh, just having more employees investigate the same bad um, investigations that were performed under the Ill Independent Police Review Authority doesn't safeguard anybody. And it's given that the United States Department of Justice, which is an outside investigatory agency, found that there were profound deficiencies in the Chicago Police Department, and it was systematic and excessive. We need to do something about it. And I don't know if necessarily uh, changing the name from IPRA to COPA is going to have any effect. I also don't know whether uh, hiring more employees for this uh, beleaguered agency is to help it any more than the uh, 141 employees that are, are already there and the $7.3 million budget that the City of Chicago is paying for this agency. Given that only less than 1% of these officers that were found to have engaged in misconduct were actually uh, discharged, it's a, a concern, especially given there's other statistics and that there are certain cases that the Independent Police Review Authority does not investigate. For instance, they only do, uh, investigate weapons discharges. There's no investigation of taser use, and apparently taser use is extremely widespread. And there's two different ways, uh, as revealed by the United States Department of Justice, that tasers are used. The first way is the probe mode, where they actually discharge electrified probes that will bring uh, an accused person to their knees very rapidly. The other uh, method of using the taser is called the drive safe uh, mode, and I'm not familiar with this personally, but according to the United States Department of Justice report, apparently this is uh, similar to a cattle prod, and it's used uh, just to inflict excruciating pain. And once again, I'm Jan Kowalski. I'm brought to you by Green Slate One Incorporated. And tonight we are talking about the United States Department of Justice report on the Chicago Police Department, the investigation of the Chicago Police Department, and the finding of the United States Department of Justice that the Chicago Police Department engaged in a pattern or practice of unconstitutional use of force. 
and we're trying to open dialogue as to what, if anything, we can do about this excessive use of force. And I'd like to thank tonight uh, Steve Pullian, my technician here, uh, Richard Agee, my producer, and of course Ziff Sistrunk, the executive producer and also the founder of Green Slate One Incorporated. And thank you, and I'll see you next week here on the same uh, CAN TV channels, 1921 and CANTV.org. Um, and uh, the next topic for next week will be um, housing discrimination and what to do in the middle of uh, February if uh, your uh, heat is not enough and what to do about it and who to go call and what to see. So please turn in uh, next week where we'll, where we'll be discussing that. Thank you, and have a great night.